listening and asking people questions about how they they catch salmon around here paid off because we finally got a big salmon coming after our boat when you were trolling. And then when we tried to reel it in, they're really smart and they, they come off the hook really easily. But then after that, we caught some little salmon. And they're little cute salmon! And we had to throw them back. This weekend, we went to the new, new chalet, new chatlets. New chalets? New, new chatlets? New chatlets. New chatlets for the March break. So just get some time off and I get some fishing done and it would it was great. <laughs> and now we are out again trying to get one more salmon for dinner hopefully and we'll see if that works out. <laughs> just trolling. trolling. <laughs> we headed out at dusk. Fishing rods humming in the wind. After an uneventful night of anchoring in the dark, we got up early and sailed right off the anchor. Winds were favorable and Robbie decided that it would be a good chance to practice some man overboard drills. So we went round and round in a figure eight way, trying to get this buoy out of the water. And it's harder than you think to grab a small buoy out of the water. So after several failed attempts, we decided to use the fish hook. I wouldn't like to be grabbed out of the water with that fish hook. And off to fishing, of course, with lots of otters around, close to precarious rocks. And our friends on SV Norana decided to join us, just in time, to show us a good anchorage in the area. So, step one for making fish curry. You make your rice, you catch your fish, you fillet it to get rid of the bones, which is not as easy as it looks like, especially when the fish is small. Gotta have some garlic, crush it to make it easier to clean. Chop it finely. Add some leek or onions, whichever ones you have. Chop it finely. Add some sun-dried tomatoes. You pan everything for a couple of minutes until it's nicely cooked. You add a little bit of Italian herbs, not much, mostly a bit of curry powder, about a teaspoon or more, a pinch of pepper, then you add your freshly sliced tomatoes, cook it for about five minutes, and then you will add your fish, which you will cook for another three to four minutes, and add on rice.
making marinated steamed fish served on a bed of steamed potatoes. First you get your potatoes and you give them a rough cleaning and you split them in half. Put them in the pressure cooker, add a little bit of water, about a cup and a half, some salt, then you get your makeshift steamer ready with some spring onions. Then you marinate your fish with some leeks, sun-dried tomatoes, garlic, a bit of parsley and a bit of garlic, some soya sauce, olive oil, Italian seasoning very slightly, some chili powder, cayenne preferably, pepper, and a pinch of what I call fish spice, which is a mix of all spices that I have lying around in the cupboard at the time. Mix everything well together and you let it settle for about 10 to 15 minutes. Then you steam everything for... Depends on the fish. If the fish is a hard meated fish, you leave it for about 10, 10 minutes. If the fish is softer, you leave it for less. Don't forget to call your friends over for dinner on the radio and potatoes are ready by then. Place them out neatly on a plate. Add more olive oil, never go wrong with that. And add your fish from the steamer directly on top. And voila! We did a little bit of exploring in the area and found some interesting sea life, some of which looked edible, like this sea lettuce. I tried drying some for later use. But I ended up running out of sunshine to dry it all, and we ended up just eating some fresh instead of incorporating it in a meal. Along with gathering food, I always like to do some useful tasks on the boat, like sewing. But life on a rocky boat can be kind of interesting when trying to do those finer tasks. Making my favorite dish on the boat, which is pasta al pesce. You make your basic tomato sauce, which is onion, garlic, and tomato peels, and you boil it until it waters down nicely, which is about 
45 minutes. Add a bit of sugar, which kills the sourness of the tomatoes. Mix it all in nicely. And you only add your fish at the last moment when the pasta is literally done. You put your fish in and you stop the flame. You add the parsley just before you dump everything inside the pasta and voila, it's done, it's quick, it's easy and it's really, really good. Trees come a ridiculous distance and they cost a ridiculous amount. And I moved out here because I thought it would be easier on the bank account while working. That's not the case with the price of food. I can only imagine what people pay in some even more remote places. Here's the fish farm. Well, looking at the salmon farm beside us, there's a couple of salmon farms. There's a lot of people around here who think that the salmon farms are bad and I don't know for sure. I do know that they're they're kind of like a factory farm on water. They seem harmless enough. They're just sitting there and there's usually some people feeding fish with a fish feeding machine. You can steer if you want. <laughs> but yeah, I think I always knew that if I was going to be on a boat or living far out somewhere here like this that I'd have to probably make changes to my diet. I'd have to accept eating fish because, um, I don't know, I think living out in remote places or being remote from other human beings kind of reduces me to a hunter-gatherer state as opposed to when I used to live in the city and I had choice and I could eat whatever I wanted and I chose to eat ethically, and I chose to eat things that were gonna harm the environment the least as possible, and that included, you know, not eating meat, because meat does that. Meat harms the environment in a lot of ways, and it's just kind of sad. But, yeah, it, it reduces you to to being like hunter-gatherer out here for sure and 
Ravi, you do the hunting for me and the gathering. We've been trying to gather. The mushrooms aren't in season right now, but the seaweed is apparently. So there's always that. There's always Soylent Green. Soylent Green. Oh wait, Soylent Green is people. You That's just ruined the country. film for everyone else who's going to watch it. Huh? You just ruined the film for anyone who wants to watch it. Oops. Soylent Green Sorry. is people. Soylent Green, Soylent Green is people. Sorry if I ruined the plot. Sorry if I ruined the ending for anyone. We'd like to thank our patrons so far, Celine, the Oregonian sailor who's marooned in inland Virginia, and our sister from another mister, Kirsty. How's that working out for you? You don't want to know. <laughs> Why is there no fish in the sea? Why is there no fish left in the sea? I don't know. Commercial fishing probably. Pollution, a mix of everything together. Do you think you might be the cause? No, just a little bit. <laughs> uh, probably not. <laughs>